pick one tech stack and stick to it forever. Three years ago, I made the decision to never ever change my tech stack ever again. And since that, I have built over 30 websites that get around 500,000 page views per month and make over a million dollars per year. Okay, let's start with the front end because front end is always funnier than back end, ha. Huh? Um, I use React, uh, the most popular uh, library uh, to build all my user interface. What I love about it is that they have a bunch of libraries. So for instance, the beautiful charts I showed you earlier uh, is coming from the Rechart library. It's just so easy to build pretty much anything with React. And often people say React is hard. I don't think React is really hard if you're using for like building little uh, internet businesses. Uh, those are all the stuff. I don't know how it works in React. I just use the three hooks and it works pretty well for my 30 websites. Okay, now moving on with my favorite part of uh, coding, the design and styling. Uh, I use Tailwind CSS instead of CSS. Um, and this is just so good. I don't even know why someone would use CSS. It comes with a bunch of pretty fine colors. Uh, you also have all those animation transitions. Like uh, it's super easy to write Tailwind CSS. I use it for every single of my website and even this little uh, game I made. On top of it, I add Daisy UI, so it's my UI component library. Be very careful here. This is where people will try to get you to uh, switch to their new trendy UI library. Don't fall for it. Stick to one UI library you like. Mine is Daisy UI. You have access to uh, all of those components and a bunch of others like toggles, form, etc. And you can also customize each of them if you want. And so, for instance, I always uh, start with the same base project, so the buttons always have a similar look. And then I would customize the colors, for instance. Uh, on this website, it's more of a gradient. Uh, style, but they behave the same. So there's this like a little animation, pops up animation. But under the hood, those two websites are using the exact same Daisy UI template. And also they have over 30 themes so you can customize to um, as deep as you want. And finally, I wrap everything inside of a Next.js project and I absolutely love it. If I want to create a new page, I just create a page.js file. If I want to create a new layout that applies to all of my uh, other pages, I just create a layout.js file. It's just so easy. And then I can easily have a bunch of pages created for me. For instance, this is another of my project that gets a couple hundred pages ranked on Google and uh, it's using basically pages and layout from Next.js. So I have those like uh, programmatic SEO pages automatically generated for me. This is just make it so easy to create a proper page and have it indexed on Google. And here we go for the backend part. I use uh, Next.js for all of my API endpoint. It's literally that simple. I just create a route.js inside of a big API folder and uh, boom, I have a post endpoint, I have a patch endpoint, I have a delete endpoint. I have literally everything I want inside of the exact same project. I don't have to uh, bother creating a new server. I don't have to uh, maintain the server. I don't have to update my server. Uh, this is using serverless and this is just so simple. And for the database, I use MongoDB. I don't know why whenever I tweet about MongoDB, people say that this is one of the worst databases in the world. I have no idea because all of my projects are running on MongoDB. They have a free plan so you can get started for nothing. They have automated backups. So I don't have to think about, you know, what if something goes wrong? And also I forgot to uh, add the icon, but on top of MongoDB, I use Mongoo just to organize a little bit my document. So in every of my project, there is a models folder. Uh, there's one usually for the user who sign in. Uh, there is um, um, usually a model for every type of data the users can create. And inside I have just a, a bunch of keys that, uh, you know, I want to save for users, a name, email, uh, customer ID that I get from Stripe, etc., etc. And then in any API endpoint, I just do user.findbyid and then I retrieve the user, I update whatever the data is. Uh, it's just so simple. And now for the hosting part, where, where is the money spent? Uh, in Versal and MongoDB Atlas. For Versal, I host uh, my front-end and my back-end because once again, I'm using Next.js, so I have my API and my front-end in the same project. So everything is hosted on Versal. Uh, those are all of my projects. I have been using Versal since, I guess, 2021 or something. And I just love it because it's just so, so, so easy to, I just click and it deploys. All I have to do is to uh, commit and push to prod and then it will be redeployed automatically on the internet. And also I wanted to show you what this tech stack costs. Uh, so for Versal, it is a tricky situation because I have been on the pro plan for like years. And um, I think about six or 12 months ago, they changed their pricing structure. Uh, for most people, they ended up paying more and I was one of them. So I don't know exactly how much I should be paying because around the same time they reached out to me. Uh, they say that because I have 30 websites on their on their platforms, they want to get some feedback from me in exchange of a zero dollar bill at the end of the month. I am technically not paying for Versal. I am not sponsored by Versal. I am not sponsored with any of the tools I'm mentioning in this video, uh, but I also want to be totally transparent. So they
they are just uh, paying my bills at the end of the month. Um, if we look at January, for instance, I would have have to pay a thousand dollars for January, which is roughly 50 times more than what I used to pay at the same date last year. But at the same time, I also ship a bunch of new apps, get way more traffic, and one of them is DataFast, where um, it's a web analytics platform, and I use Versal API endpoints to track those events. Uh, which means like if I have, let's say 200 customers who are sending me events from 200 websites, my API endpoint is called like a multiple time per seconds, which is probably also why my Versal bill went up. And for the database hosting, I am using MongoDB Atlas. Uh, those are all of my project on the left side. I create one cluster per project, and then I have usually a prod database. And usually if I wanna test stuff, I have like a testing database on my computer. And same for MongoDB, since I am now running like this web analytic tool, uh, my bill went up by crazy. It was, uh, it was at $9 a month. At top, I was at $67 per month. And then in October, when I launched this web analytics tools, uh, my bill went crazy up. So right now I'm paying about $500 a month for the database. So 10x what I used to pay uh, at the same time last year as well. Uh, I think for this one, I can just optimize a little bit. I need to think, I just didn't have time for that. Okay, so this is like the foundation of uh, everything I built with. And then likely I will need a third party tools for, I don't know, processing payments, user authentication, etc. Not all of those tools are used in all of my apps. So I'm gonna cover each of them, how much I pay for them and what I use them for. The first one uh, is one you're likely gonna need to is AuthJS to authenticate users. Um, I use it for all of my websites. Like I have this like a page build, then I can just input my Google, API key, I set up magic links, and then I have an entire logging system set up. It's free, it's open source, it's working super well. Now for emails, to send transactional emails, I broke my rule of never changing my text tag because I used to use Melgun to send emails. And I still use Melgun for all the apps that I didn't migrate, but every new app I use now are using Recent. It's a more, I would say friendly, like it's a, the user interface is much easier to use than Melgun. But the number one reason I use them is because they don't only have transactional emails, which are email you send for like signups and stuff, but they also have marketing emails. And since I build my product in public, I need to update my power users after a week, a month, about new features that I've released. And this is why I switched to recent. And so I can create audiences of people when they sign up to my app, for instance, and then I can broadcast messages. So for instance, the other day I released a new feature, so I can just write an email with like some placeholder stuff, and I can just broadcast this email to the exact same emails of people who signed up for my products. The fact that recent have transactional and marketing emails makes my life so much easier. And billing wise, I am at $60 a month. So the, the transactional emails are pretty cheap and then marketing as always, it's uh, it's higher, more expensive. Uh, this is pretty much what I'm paying. All right, now the most expensive and also the most important part of my tech stack, Stripe. I use Stripe to process payments on all websites I create. They take about 5% cuts on every payment. So uh, by the end of the year, that's 60,000 US dollars. But I guess, uh, you know, that's the, the only way to uh, get, make money on the internet. Uh, so I'm more than happy to pay that. And I mean, the software is just beautiful. I create one project every single time uh, I cr have a new business idea, I will create a new Stripe account. And all those Stripe accounts are owned by the same exact company, my company. I know Stripe is a little uh, tricky to uh, to set up when you're getting started. If you want, there is a video on my channel called the easy way to set up recurring payments with Stripe. Um, you can check that out. All right, now moving on with the next product. And uh, with this one is one product I own called DataFast. It's a web analytics uh, platform. Um, I built it for myself initially because um, all the analytics tool I find are either like very boring, like Google Analytics, which is just a complete headache, or they're more made for like developers. But since I'm on the middle between developers and entrepreneur, I wanted to have payment. I wanted to see how does the revenue connects with the traffic. So my DataFast dashboard is going to show me a little bit like all the traffic and the revenue I make in the past 24 hours. And for each website, I have more information about um, you know the data, the analytics. So for instance, for this one, um, I can compare uh, what it does compared to the previous month. Um, it calculates some metrics like the, the revenue generated per visit uh, this is good because then I know if I spend less than $1 um, in Facebook ads to drive traffic to this product, I am still profitable, for instance. It also connects the revenue to the visitor, so I know uh, which marketing channels bring the most money. Uh, I know which countries uh, are more profitable. I know which internet browser they're using. And also one thing I was really curious about is what do people do before making a purchase? So I've created this little, like, uh, little thing here called Journey, where uh, I can see for one person what they have done before making the payments. 
So I can see that this person has filmed the website through uh, YouTube, so likely my YouTube channel. Uh, what they did during that day, came back a month later, then it came back five days later, and the next day, through X or through Twitter, they probably found one of my tweets and ended up making a purchase. It helps me as a business owner understand a little bit what is going on on my site. Now what I want to do is to connect that with an AI and hopefully the AI will find patterns in what are some recurring actions that people do before purchasing a product. So I can just see what do I need to double down to make more money. Okay, next part, we have AWS. I use it only when I need to make some stuff with images and videos. For instance, for these little websites, it's like a link in bio, like a portfolio builder tool. Uh, people can upload logos if they want. They can change their profile photos, etc. I put all of those images into a big S3 bucket, and then I use CloudFront to load those images fast. Then I use Upstash for uh, background tasks that are pretty long. For instance, I have this little, um, uh, little board where anyone can sign up up and share their revenue uh, using Stripe. Um, holy, wow, this guy crossed 10 million, <laughs> crazy. Here, um, for instance, for a guy like him, it would take a long, long time to fetch all the payments from his Stripe account in order to display this amount of money, and I do that using Upstash. And I also use Currency API for uh, this website here, this little board, uh, because some people are making money in foreign currencies, and I want to unify that in US dollars so like it's I can compare and like rank them uh, based on their uh, revenue. And I use the, the, actual, the actual currency rate from Currency API. Also, I forgot to mention, this costs me maybe five or $10 a month, and this is a paid plan, and I think it's $30 a month. I use Namecheap when I need to buy a domain name. This is my favorite place to go for just shopping, and sometimes I need to buy like a exotic domain. For instance, I have this like shipfa.st. If I want to buy .st domain names, Namecheap, Namecheap does not uh, let me do that, so I use Netim instead. Each of the domains I own cost me around $20 a year, so I guess I have maybe four or $600 a year, or maybe even more than that, of domain name payments. Okay, uh, this is new in my tech stack because I didn't need that before, but recently I launched a course named CodeFast where I teach people um, how to code an entire software from scratch, and I wanted the platform to be good. I wanted to load it fast. And for that, I use Mux. It's like a, I don't know, it's like a mix of AWS with a good user interface where you can just drag and drop videos, and then they will be able to stream your videos with a very nice player uh, that, you know, it looks good, like I can go forward, backward, they will load in 720p if I don't have much data coverage. Uh, you can go up to 4K if my internet connection is great. It just feels great. And because I started using this for the course, I also uh, start to use the Mux player for pretty much any product I make because it just, it's pleasurable to see. So for instance, for DataFast, there's a change log where uh, I update people about what's new. Um, I also use the Mux player here. Uh, they have this like amazing feature like English auto-generated subtitles. So I just push the video, it has perfect quality, people can stream it, their subtitles, it's just so good. On the downside, it's pretty expensive. Uh, I think for my course, I spent around $500 a month just to stream videos. Uh, luckily, there is something if you ever use their service where if you make content for developers, they have this like a uh, little uh, badge that you can add to your site and they will cover up to $1,000 worth of spent on your bill. Okay, and finally, uh, Capacitor. Man, this tool changed my life. This is crazy. I don't know anything about building iOS or Android apps. I just, I am a web developer and I build this uh, habit tracker as long as two other uh, web apps and I turn them into a mobile app. App. So for instance, this habit tracker has, uh, it's, it's actually an app on the app store, so you can uh, download it on your phone. And I still don't know how to code native apps, but I use Capacitor just to basically wrap like a, a native view around my web app. I can just push it and boom, I have a little uh, apps app right here. Um, that is ranked on the app stores. And finally, we are in 2025, 80% of my code is written by an AI, so I think I need to mention uh, the AI part of my tech stack. Um, I use Cursor as a code editor, and I have a little LLM inside, so at the moment I'm using Claude 3.5 Sonnets. Uh, I use the chat heavily to create stuff. I also use the Composer sometimes when I know what I want. Uh, the AI is actually really good and really fast. It can go on the internet, it can open my terminal and run some comments. But I also use Cursor AI to do a bunch of other stuff. For instance, since it knows my entire code base, I can ask if there are any like uh, security flaws or endpoints that are not secure. It is really good at finding uh, security issues in my code base. Since it knows the entire copy of my site, it's also really good at writing uh, documentation, change logs, and also just copy itself. And I think very few, very few people are using this feature, uh, but Cursor AI is so good at design. What you can do is if you want a time picker, just go on Google, uh, you find whatever link of a time picker you like, 
you just take a little uh, screenshot of it and then in cursor you just well you just copy past the image and you can just write a little piece of text like recreate these components and you know change the colors change the border radius whatever it is getting really good at designing at the moment all right that's the end of the video uh, these are all the little uh, websites i've created in the past three years if you want to check out there is a link in uh, the description also each of those websites are connected with uh, my stripe account so um, my actual revenue is on this page it took me almost seven years to get to this point and in the first three to five years i kept changing my tech stack over and over and i really wish i knew that tech stack don't matter your customers really don't care about the invisible they care about the problem you're solving for them. Your tech stack is like a, a muscle. The more you practice, the more you build apps with the same tech stack, the better I get at it you get, so the faster you'll be able to ship. And the faster you ship, the faster you will get customers because you're going to make a bunch of small bets. And that's the end of this video. If you liked it, well, you can like it. And until the next video, I hope you keep shipping. Oh, I almost forgot. I just made this video. It took me about a month to make that. It's an entire video about how to learn how to code using AI. It goes from complete beginner to learning how to build a SaaS and it's completely free. It's about three hours long, so enjoy it. Cheers.